I want to keep on talking to you from, of, on the topic of gatherer or scatterer. Are you a gatherer or are you a scatterer? A few Sundays ago, I, Sunday evenings ago, we spoke on this topic. I'm going to lay a short foundation and then we're just going to go a little bit deeper on this topic. The question is, are you a gatherer or are you a scatterer? In Luke chapter 11 verse 23, it says, he who, is not, he who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters. So if you are not a gatherer, you are a scatterer. There's no middle ground. I said to you in the previous sermon that the church of Jesus today, unfortunately, are full of scatterers. And when I read this verse, it was like my spirit leaped and the Lord spoke to me and said to me, speak to my people. Because unknowingly, some of them have conformed to scattering instead of gathering. So this is good medicine to a born again Christian. You might not like the castor oil coming from heaven tonight, but it's good for you. You just need to suck it up, put it down your throat and trust God that if you're gonna take it and you're gonna believe it, then you're gonna change and be better for it. Here Jesus gives us a, an eternal truth. He makes it known to us that if we are not with him, we are against him. If you are not with the word of God, you are against the word of God. And that is from Genesis to Revelation, by the way. That's why we believe the fullness of the word of God. That's why we get trained in the fullness of the Word of God. Not just certain chapters, not just certain books, not just certain verses. We love the fullness of the Word of God. We study the fullness of the Word of God because we want to live in the fullness of what God has for us. Amen. So if we are not with Him, we are against Him. And where if we are not gathering, we are scattering. I don't want you to be a scattering Christian because scatter means to throw loosely about. It means to distribute in irregular intervals. It means to separate and drive off in various directions. I, I, I use the example that when you are a scattering Christian, your church attendance is irregular. Tell your neighbor, he's not talking to me, he's talking to you. Your, your giving is irregular. Your tithes and offerings is irregular. Then you tithe, then you don't. Then you tip God. No, no, rather, yeah, no, never tip God. But it's every now and then. There's 12 months in the year, 52 weeks, by the way. If you get paid in weeks, 52 payments. If you get, if you get monthly, 12. Not three out of 12. And one this year and five next year. No, no, no. You are not a scattering. You're not irregular. Amen. You are not throwing seed loosely. You are not running about. You're not a, a loose cannon. You become a disciplined follower of Jesus. Amen. You don't separate. You don't get people to leave the church. You get them to cleave to the church. Are you a lever or a cleaver? I, I, am I talking to, I hope I'm talking to gatherers tonight. Because I, 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 I'm, I promise you I'm going to preach out the scatterers. That's my goal. My goal is to preach out any scatterer. But build every gatherer. Amen. Am I talking to gatherers? I don't know what's happening there in Seven Oaks. It looks like they are scattering. Uh, I don't know what's happening there in Southfields. It looks like they are scattering, but here in Elam and Sawbridgeworth, East Barnet, there's a bunch of gatherers. Amen. 
So a person that's scatters drives off in various directions. They never get planted. Uh, they are found here, there, and everywhere. They follow the next best green, better pastors. I mean, um, those who scatters are loose. Um, they do not want to be under authority. They want to do their own thing. They know better. They think they are the anointed, the gift from God uh, out of heaven to humanity. No one can train them. No one can teach them. They are not solid in the house of God. They are irregular, like I said, irregular with church attendance, irregular with serving, irregular with their giving, irregular with their soul winning. I hope I'm not talking to any one of you. Irregular in the church, uh, disciple making. And that's just to name a few things. So that's why it's important to check your regular church attendance, your regular giving, your regular serving. It, it helps you to de determine if you're really now moving towards scattering or you stay on the road of gathering. Yep, right. Family not gathering with Jesus or being a gatherer like Jesus, you are a scatterer of Satan. Simple, that's it, eat it up. There's no middle ground. You either gather or you scatter. Yep. To gather means to bring together into one group, collection or place. To bring together or assemble from various places, sources or people. To attract, it means to pick or harvest any crop or natural yield from its place of growth um, or formation. It is to pick up piece by piece. When you are a gatherer, you, you want to build people. You pick them up piece by piece. You, you become attractive. People want to be in your home cell. They want to leave their dead home cell and to go and come to your home cell. They want to be around you. You become attractive to them in the things of God, in the things of God, amen? I must say, attractive in the things of God, all right? You can't be a, a, a home cell leader, male home cell leader with only girls in your home cell. There's some wrong attraction then, amen? You should attract other men as well. Say amen, pastor. A gather together means to collect. It means to accumulate and increase. A person that gathers bring people together into one group or one place. Gatherers bring people together from various places, sources, or people groups. They bridge. They don't separate. They cross. They help others to cross over. A person that gathers attracts. They are they are there to be harvesters and they are constantly looking to harvest. They collect, they accumulate, and they bring forth increase. They are focused. Gatherers are worried about the seed that is empty next to them. Gatherers are worried about their home cell that has too much space and do not have enough people. If you are a gatherer, you are not going to be a scatterer. So that's why you need to know the difference between a gatherer and a scatterer. And if you are a gatherer, you are with Jesus. If you are not a gatherer, you're still helping the enemy. You're part of the problem. Yeah. Oh, Amen. Hopefully, I'm talking to the right group. So where is Jesus today? Jesus can be found or experienced among gatherers. The Bible says, where two or more are gathered in my name, there he is, or there I am in the midst of them. The people of God comes together so that people can experience Jesus. When people of God comes together, the main focus is those who do not know him or haven't experienced him must experience him in that meeting. They must come to meet him. It's like you coming to my house and you meet my whole family, but you don't meet me. Why did you come then? I mean, you come, but you never meet me. Hello? So when we gather, the Lord is with gatherers. There's a lot of people of God coming together, 
but nobody's meeting Jesus. So when gatherers come together, they understand that the main reason for gathering is for those who do not know Jesus to experience and meet Jesus in that gathering because he can be found there. So that's why every home cell, every life in our church, every person is important. When you get born again, you must become a gatherer because a gatherer is focused to bring things together. A gatherer is focused to make sure that when a gatherer and another gatherer comes together, the main reason for the meeting is Jesus being met by those who do not know him. And when your life is clouded with scattering, or if you are a born again scatterer, you come together for all kinds of reasons, except people that do not know Jesus meeting Jesus or experiencing Jesus. Okay. There where two or more are gathered as his people, Jesus will be found. And we are coming together every Sunday to celebrate what the Lord has done in the week in our gatherings as gatherers. Amen. And we want other people to come celebrate with us, welcome in our celebration. But we know that this celebration services that we have on a Sunday is filled with gatherers that want others to meet Jesus. That's why we come together to worship Him, to, to ask the Holy Spirit to manifest His presence over here so that Jesus could be met by people that do not know Him. So last week I told you that Jesus is a gatherer, that He was sent out of heaven into our world to gather a lost world back onto the Father. I've explained to you that the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. So you cannot be scattering. You cannot be a scatterer and call yourself a born again Christian. You must become a gatherer. You need to focus on gathering. Say it, amen. You, all of you that said, I'm a gatherer, should say, amen. amen. In John chapter 11, it says in verse 51, now he did not say this simply on his own initiative. But being the high priest that year, he was unknowingly used by God and prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation. And not only for the nation, but also for the purpose of gathering together into one body the children of God who have been scattered abroad. So Jesus came to die not just for the Jewish people, but for all of God's people you and I. And he came to gather us back onto the Father. The life and death and resurrection of Jesus was to gather the nations of this world back onto God. So family, we are to be like Jesus in this world. Every born again Christian, you were created to be just like him. You and I should operate just like him. We work to be just like Him. Amen. If we are determined to be just like Him, a gatherer, let's look at the characteristics of gatherers. Let's look at a few characteristics of gatherers. Hebrews chapter 12, I'm so excited about your excitement. <laughs> gatherers. Amen. Maybe some of you are still scatterers and now you get, you just say, oh, I'm a, I'm a gatherer but you don't say, look excited when I want to share with you. Look excited, look alive, okay? <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, 22 says the following. We can read 22, 23, and then 25. It says, by contrast, we have already come near to God in a totally different realm. Oh, <laughs> the Zion realm, the church realm. For we have entered the city of the living God. No, we're going to enter the city one day when we die. No, no, you have entered. You have changed realms. Just think about it. 
you were in a realm, now you are, because you were born again, you are in a different realm. You are in the Zion realm. You are in the ch church realm. All right? And you have entered the city of the living God, which is the new Jerusalem in heaven. We have joined the festive gathering of um, marriage and of, of marriage of angels in their joyful, joyous celebration. Not still church. And as members of the church of the firstborn, all our names have been legally registered. You can get excited. Legally registered as citizens of heaven. <laughs> and we have come before God who judges all and who lives among the spirits of right the righteous who have been perfect in his eyes. Who have been made perfect in his eyes. You get born again for what reason? So that you can have a perfect spirit. That's why the Bible says when you are born again, you are born again from incorruptible seed, the Word of God. And the Bible says, God lives among those who have spirits of righteousness. And He looks at those spirits and He says they are perfect. Amen. Make sure that you never refuse to listen to the God to listen to God when he speaks. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, he's, just, yeah, he, he's not just speaking to you. Never, he says, make sure that you never refuse to listen to God when he speaks. Is God speaking? I'm asking, is God speaking at this moment? Oh, but I see a man. Is God speaking at this moment? Make sure that you never refuse to listen when he speaks. For the God who spoke on earth from Sinai is the same God who now speaks from heaven. Those who heard him speak his living word on earth found nowhere to hide. So what chance is there for us to escape if we turn as the born again people our backs on God and refuse to hear his warnings as he speaks from heaven. So God is saying, church, even though you're born again, it doesn't mean you can automatically listen. You have to work on it to, know, to, to tune in because the same God that spoke from the mountain to the people and they didn't listen is the same God that now speaks to you. So make sure that you do not turn your back on God when He speaks. How many times is God speaking to you as a scatterer and not a gatherer? How many times is God speaking to you because you are not a sower? I'm going to show you tonight that scatterers are not sowers. And that gatherers are sowers. And sowers are gatherers. Oh, I'm not a scatterer, Pastor but there's no financial contribution onto the work of God. You don't honor God with your giving. You are deceived. You might be among gatherers, but you are a scatterer. So he says over here, we have already come near to God and moved into the Zion realm, into the church realm, into the born again realm. Our names have legally been registered as citizens of heaven. Our spirits have been made perfect in his eyes. Amen. Amen. Now we need to make sure that we never refuse to listen to God when he speaks to us. What chance do we have to escape if we are born again in the right realm as citizens of heaven, 
refusing to listen to our God speaking today. If the people of old did not escape, what chance is there if we moved realms, are found in those realms, but we choose not to listen? In Psalms 147 verse 2, it says, The Lord is building up Jerusalem. He is gathering the exiles of Israel. So the first characteristic of a gatherer is the following. The Lord God is a gatherer. Amen. Jesus is a gatherer. The Lord is clearly also here a builder. Amen. He was a carpenter. But the Bible says over here, the Lord is building up, not tearing down, building up. So the Lord is a gatherer. The Lord is a builder. So a gatherer equals a builder. If you are a gatherer, you are focused to build your home cell. You build your zone. You build your campus. You build the kingdom. Amen. Gatherers are builders. Matthew chapter 13, 7 says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet which was lowered into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. Second thing that you need to know about gatherers, gatherers are net throwers. Fishermen. Not with a rod or like these dudes all fly fishing one at a time. No, no, they are net throwers. And they are dragging fish of all kind. Because when you fly fish, you fly just for trout. Amen. But when you are a gatherer, you are focused to throw your net wide. Everything you do is to throw your net wide. You build a business to throw your net wider. You build a big zone to throw your net wider. You have a church and a campus because you want to throw your net wider. Everything you do, you have many friends because you want to throw your net wider. You have a, a, a birthday party is for your friends, but you want to throw your net. Are you with me? Gatherers are net throwers. They just don't want to catch just one kind. They want to catch every kind possible and drag them in. Uh, why do I need to go pick them up and bring them to church? You have to drag them in. Why do I need to go every Sunday to the bus station and get the... You have to drag them in. To help them bridge, help them step over, help them coming in. Are you still with me? Amen. Hebrews chapter 10, 23, 25 says, Let us seize and hold tightly the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is reliable and trustworthy and faithful to his word. He's reliable, he is trustworthy, and he's faithful to his word. He's reliable, he's trustworthy, and he's faithful to his word. Are you reliable, are you trustworthy, and are you faithful to your word? Gatherer, are you reliable, are you trustworthy, and are you faithful to your word? Wasn't in the notes. By the way. Because he is, the main gatherer is reliable, he's trustworthy, and he's faithful to what? His word. And let us consider thoroughly how we may encourage one another to love and to do God deeds, not forsaking our meeting together. Pastor calls, hey brother, how are you doing? No, very well, Pastor. Are you everything okay? Why? No, we haven't seen you at church for three weeks. 
No, 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 I've just been busy. Busy with what? Ah, oh, you know, if it, you know, yeah. but I promise I'm going to be there on Sunday. I'll be there. And because you're a scatterer, you're not reliable, you're not trustworthy, and you're not faithful with your word. <clears throat> not forsaking the meeting together as believers for worship and instruction. Worship and coffee after the service. Worship and social meeting friends. Worship and feeling good about myself. Worship and in, so why do you don't say amen when I say for instruction? Because you don't like to be instructed. Don't tell me what to do. I've got teenagers as well. And you're like a teenager in the house of God. Not yet to tell me what to do. Who are you to tell me what to do? True worship is never without instruction. When you truly worship the, G the Lord, He will never after that worship session leave you without the instruction. And many people in the church, they like to worship, but they hate instruction. And therefore, they will neglect the gathering together. Because it's the problem for them is not the worship, the problem is what I'm doing right now. And scatterers have problems with instructions. Oh, it is good. Amen. Because it comes from the Lord. Y'all right. clap. I know it's painful, but clap. It's tight, but it's right. Somebody needs to tell you this. It says here, not forsaking our meeting together as believers for worship and instruction, as is the habit of scatterers. Oh no, sorry, some. But encouraging one another and all the more faithfully when, as we see the day of Christ's return approaching. If you are, <laughs> gatherers never forsake the coming together or the meeting together of believers. It's a high priority in their lives. When you are a gatherer, no one should tell you how important your church attendance, your home cell attendance, your uh, uh, coming together is in the body of Christ. When you are a gatherer, that's the next point, point four, gatherers motivate others to gather. Hello. That's why some of you home cell leaders, you are more a scatterer than a gatherer because you do not confront people that's in your care. You don't motivate them to gather. You don't train them how important it is to gather. You are like that mom and dad that just allow the teenagers to do whatever they want in your house. Tell your neighbor, that is absolutely not me. Tell your other friend, I hope he's not talking to you about you. Awful quiet in this Presbyterian church tonight. I hope I'm speaking to gatherers and not scatterers. I hope I'm speaking to people that want to snap out of it, that might be stuck in scattering, 
but realize, hey, I'm part of the problem. I need to become a gatherer. Because a gatherer encourages people to come to church, to home cell, to prayer meeting, to outreach. A gatherer constantly encourages people of the importance and teach people of the importance of gathering. Remind them when they are drifting towards scattering. John chapter 4, 37 say, says the following, for in this case, the saying is true. One person sows and the other reaps. In the kingdom of God, there's sowers and reapers and reapers and sowers and they are one. It's like a husband and wife, they're different, isn't it? So uh, uh, um, a husband is a sower and a wife is a reaper. Or the wife, okay, lay, relax, ladies. The wife is the sower and the husband is the reaper, but they are one. So Jesus says, in my kingdom, there's ones that's sowing and then there's ones that's reaping. And then there's ones that's reaping and there's ones that's sowing. And they all work together as one. So I wanna tell you the following, listen to this. Reapers are sowers and sowers are reapers and reapers are gatherers, meaning gatherers are sowers. So reapers are gatherers and gatherers are sowers. That means gatherers Sorry, reapers are sowers and sowers are reapers, but reapers are gatherers. So that means when you're a gatherer, you're a sower. And can I tell you something powerful? In all my years serving Jesus, I have found that those who are sowers are gatherers. And I found that those who are truly gatherers are sowers. They never have a problem to financially contribute to a gathering movement. But I have found that scatterers are not sowers. Ooh, it's tight. Are you a gatherer? If you are a gatherer, you have no issue with financial sowing into ground or places that gathers lost people onto Jesus. But when you are a born again scatterer, you have a problem with sowing. Oh, I sow my time, really? I, me too, that's what I do just now. We're not talking about that kind of sowing. You are in a mature church. We're talking about financial contribution that you bring faithfully, not irregularly, because you see lives being restored unto Jesus. That's why I said to you all the years, if us as a church is not focused on gathering lost people unto Jesus, then please take your tithes and offerings to the, uh, well, I can't name a, name a church, but take him to those places. Don't give you. But if you see people Lives get changed, people connected with Jesus, people being disciples, churches being planted, campuses being planted, uh, then you've got a great ground. That's right, that's but I wanna leave you with this, that gatherers are sowers. When you are a gatherer, you love to sow. And sowers, people that sow unto the work of God, they love to gather. They get excited after they sowed into a church and people get saved. Because the purpose why they sow those seeds. Haven't I trained you so many times that every time that you give a, a, a pound or a penny into this ministry, you should connect that penny onto a soul. 
I can't do it for you, but I can train you. I can tell you what to do. When you take your tithes and your offerings, and no matter how much it is, you have to connect a soul to it. Say, Lord, here's my seed for so many people. I'm sowing it. And I want my harvest to come from my seed that I sowed. Are you connecting your sowing for the purpose of gathering? I'm asking. Gatherers never have a problem with sowing financially into the work of God. Gatherers love to sow and sowers love to gather. Say it with me. Gatherers love to sow and sowers love to gather. Matthew chapter 13, 24, is this helping somebody? Jesus gave them another parable to consider, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds, resembling wheat, among the wheat and went away. So when the plants sprouted and formed grain, the weeds appeared also. (laughs) Gatherers have fruit. Scatterers are like wheat, has no fruit, but they look like wheat. Can I drop my mic? So, you look the part, but wheat has grains that resembles fruit. But weeds looks like wheat, has no fruit, And that's the same between a gatherer and a scatterer. They worship together. They grow up in church together. So this uh, is for the gatherers and the scatterers. The gatherers are the wheat and the scatterers are the weeds. Are you still with me? So when the plants sprouted and formed grain, the weeds appeared also. The servants of the owner, the angels, came to him and said, Sir, did you not sow seed in your field? Then how does it have weeds in it? He replied to them, An enemy has done this. The servants asked him, Then do you want us to go and pull them out? He's talking to the angels that's coming to pluck all the scatterers. He says, but he said, no, because as you pulled out the weeds, you will, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, first gather the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into the barn. So a born again person or a born again church, unfortunately the born again church today are filled with scatterers, with gatherers. But when Jesus comes back, he's gonna send his angels to gather the gatherers unto him. Gatherers are going to the gatherer's barn. And he who has an ear to hear, let him hear today this message. Born again Christian, you must focus to be a gatherer and stop being a scatterer. Because Jesus is coming back for gatherers and not for scatterers. In John 4 verse 36 it says, Already the reaper is receiving his wages. 
and is gathering fruit for eternal life. So that he who plants and he who reaps may rejoice together. So what are you doing when you are a gatherer? You're hoarding up your wages, your fruit for eternal life. Oh, it's not important for me to be a gatherer in the church today. You, are, you might not go to the place you want to go. And if God is gracious enough to let you go, what fruit are you having in your barn for eternal life? Because as you now work and as you now go and gather with Jesus, every person you reap is like ching, ching. Fruit for eternal life. That's why when we are going to stand before Jesus, we are going to get rewards. Hello. You're not going to stand there fearfully. You're going to get rewards. Why are you not going to stand there fearfully? Because you've been made perfect in love. Because you know that you've been a gatherer all the days of your life till Jesus came. And you are now going to stand before him and you're going to hear my good and faithful servant. And you're going to receive your eternal Reward your eternal fruit of your labor. Yeah. Then the Bible says, let us pray to the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers yeah. into the harvest. So you are now a laborer. A gatherer is a laborer bringing in the harvest that's fruit to your account for eternal life. That's why the Bible says, he who wins souls is wise. There's a powerful scripture. There's not many places where the Bible tells us who's wise and who's not wise. The Bible says, he who wins souls is wise. So I want to tell you, if you are born again today and you are maybe listening uh, on a broadcast to this message five years from now, I want to tell you, if you are focusing on gathering, you are going to be wise. Yes, amen. You're going to be classified wise for eternity. You are going to store up for yourself riches and you're going to store up for yourself fruits for eternal life. Church, Satan is trying to get you back out of the kingdom into the world. He's trying to get you to conform back. He's trying to steal now, not just your life, but your rewards. Right. Are you gonna allow him to steal your rewards? Or are you gonna say, I'm not playing his game anymore. I am a gatherer with Jesus. And you are now making lists of people in your circle. You have a circle, amen? amen? I mean, you have cells in your body, it's yeah. circles. And you, so you are full of cells, you're full of circles. But when you ha go into the world, you have a circle of friends. And when you go to a home cell, it's a circle. You sit in a circle most of the time, amen? So I'm just saying most of the time, not all the time. It's not like an AA meeting. I mean, I know some of you are having homes are like the AA, you know, but it shouldn't be like that, but it's a circle. So write down all the circles that you know. And tell the Lord, Lord, all my giving is for my circle to be gathered in. And then be faithful when they are gathered. Make your circle bigger. I started with one circle. I have now many circles Amen. in many places in the city and many places in this country and in Europe. And I'm, in, I'm fully intended to have more circles. And still today, every pound I give, I don't give because I must. I don't give because I want to get. Every time I give, I give so that other people can be gathered. Amen. 
you were gathered because somebody else was a sower. John 4, 36. Already the reaper is receiving his wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life so that he who plants and he who reaps may rejoice together. By being a gatherer, you are receiving your wages and you, you are gatherers are gathering fruit for eternal life. Zephania 2 verse 1 to 5 says, Gather yourselves together. Yes, gather in submission. Gather together in repentance. Gather in submission. Gather yourselves together in repentance and gather in submission. O nation without shame, before the decree takes effect. Watch this. And the time of repentance is lost. It's talking to the church. It says, gather together in repentance and submission. And gather, O nation without shame. Shame before the decree comes in effect. There's a, a decree coming in effect when Jesus comes back. No more repentance. So he says, Now come together before the decree comes into effect. The day passes like chaff, wooled, wooled by the wind, before the burning and fierce anger of the Lord comes upon you before the day of the wrath of the Lord comes upon you. Seek the Lord, see, search diligently for Him with, uh, and regard Him as the foremost necessity of your life. All you are humble of the land who have practiced His ordinances and kept His commandments, seek righteousness, seek humility, regard them as vital. Perhaps you will be hidden and pardoned and rescued in the day of the Lord's anger. The seventh thing I want to leave you about the characteristic of gatherers is the following. Gatherers never devalue the importance of repentance and submission when they gather together. When true gatherers gather together, Somehow that meeting will lead to opportunity of repenting and you will leave that meeting with the importance of submitting your life unto God. Amen. So when you are a gathering church and you have a gathering pastor, it is quite natural in that meeting that the meeting will steer to a place of repenting and submission under the word of God. So when you are a gathering homsa leader, what is happening, everything you do, at the end of the day, everybody would have a great time and everybody was excited, but that meeting will suddenly shift. And the main thing of the gatherers is to give the importance of repentance opportunity to repent and everybody in that meeting will leave with the importance of submitting themselves under God. I hope you experience that every time you come to our church. You still with me? Gatherers understand that the time of repentance will come to an end but the time of submission will never. That's why gatherers are focused to lead people to repentance and are focused to tell people the importance of submission, but gatherers understand that the time of repentance will come to an end, but the that submission will be an eternal journey. Repentance gets you onto the foundation of an eternal life of submission. There's no 
entry into a life of submission without true repentance. But you can repent and abdicate your responsibility to be submissive. That's why if Jesus comes, or when he comes, not if, say pastor, not if, when. Say it, with, say, it with, say it for me, pastor, not if, when. It's a slip of the tongue. When, when Jesus comes, the time of repentance is over. The decree stepped in. No more of repentance. He's going to change Divide the sheep and the goats, the gatherers and the scatterers, the wheat and the weeds at that moment. Boom. But the journey of eternal submission is going to carry on. And for a thousand years, We're going to be on that journey. And as you're on that journey, you will have to keep yourself as one that is submitted to Christ. Because as you can become a born again scatterer, you can be a born again in the thousand years, one that choose not to submit under him no more. That's why where does your journey start of teaching you and training you to submit unconditionally unto God? Because many of you are caught up in conditional submission. I will submit to my husband if... I was a pattern to my pastor if conditional submission and not unconditional submission. And conditional submission now is going to get you in trouble in the thousand years of reign. Because you think I am tough. Oh boy. Oh boy, you've got something coming when the king comes back. Oh boy, you do not know him that's returning. And today, you and I are in the church being educated, being trained how to keep yourself on this journey, this eternal journey of submitting willfully, unconditionally unto Jesus. You got to read this book. And then you need to read the last book of this book. The one that you don't want to read. The one that you read and you read it and you read and you don't get it. And you read again and you don't get it again. You have to study the book. Because it's not smooth sailing in the thousand years. It's great testing in that thousand years. All of us will have to some die. I promise you now, you're going to stand, you're going to remind me in the thousand years, and you're going to say, Pastor, you preached that to us in the, when we were in that dispensation. Because some of us are still going to have to make hard choices. When the Lord makes decrees from out of Jerusalem that you might not like. In London. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. That you won't see because you don't understand. But you must unconditionally submit to him. Do you know that Adam and Eve, can I, can I take you deeper? Some of you look like you're, you're, you're deep enough. <laughs> can, I, can, can we go a little bit? Okay. 
two principles Adam and Eve were supposed to. Um, Adam and Eve, by the way. I'm, I'm just saying Adam and Eve. Not Adam and. <clears throat> um, but anyway, two principles that they had to. Um, had to implement into humanity. Submission and authority. And they messed it up. They messed it up. And that's why Jesus came and implemented that as the foundation of the new creation. And the new man. And that's why he expects unconditional submission. But not unconditional obedience. Because unconditional submission is the attitude of the heart. And he will never expect unconditional Obedience, if it's not in line with the word. Are you with me? So that's our safety, that if I am unconditionally submitted unto God and God's authority, my heart is right towards it. I know that I cannot, he doesn't want me to have unconditional obedience. Because currently, as a man of God, I can get you to do things that's outside of the word. Not that I will, praise God. But I can. And then you have the right to say, Pastor, I love you, but what you ask from me now is not in line with the word. Therefore, my heart is still submissive. I don't think you're nuts, you're crazy, there's a problem with you, I don't tell everybody what I think about you, but my heart is submissive, but I cannot be obedient because it's not in line with the word. And he made that as the fabric of the new man. Bad news, born again Christians so that you have no excuse. You can be unconditionally submitted unto Jesus for eternity because he's the word. And some of you think that you're going to be unconditionally submitted unto the man Jesus when you see him. But you're not going to, unless you now submit yourself under his word. Are you submitted under the word? If the word says win souls, are you winning souls? If the word says make disciples, are you making disciples? If the word says serves, are you serve? If the word says give, do you give? If the word says I want you to love, do you love? I want you to pray, do you pray? Can I leave you with this? When I got saved, I told you of my encounter with Jesus for a whole month in my room. There, the Lord showed me many things. And when I came out of that experience, I wanted to see miracles. Because here I'm serving the God of miracles, the one that raised the dead, opened the blind eyes, got the cripples to walk. And he called me, he anointed me. I want to see the Lord move, amen. So I thought, if I see those things, my life is going to change. My faith is going to go to a whole nother level. Amen? Like some of you think. And I prayed and fasted for a few days, and then I got invited to such a meeting where the crippled walked, the blind eyes opened. Can I give you the honest truth? My faith didn't go to a whole nother level. It didn't change me. Yeah. 
So do not think that in the thousand years, if you see Jesus, you're going to keep on being submissive because you saw him. Many followers saw Jesus after the crucifixion and they didn't stay submissive. Let pastor help you today. The word is Jesus and Jesus is the fullness of the word. Learn to submit yourself under the word. Everything in this world, everything in society is trying to get you not to submit to the word. This is your training ground. This is your opportunity to create in yourself a habit. If God says it, it settles it. If it's in line with God's word, I'm obedient. If it's not, I am still submissive, but I do not have to be obedient. How many times have I told you, if I don't preach to you out of the word, you don't have to do. But if I preach to you and you don't like it, it gives you no right to give your opinion, speak out, slander, tell your neighbor that is, this is good stuff. So gatherers have certain characteristics. And I pray that I'm speaking to gatherers across every campus. And if you are here tonight and you are experiencing conviction, I don't want you to experience condemnation. Condemnation is a fleshly thing from the devil that gets you to move away. Are you with me? I'm not preaching to you to get you away. I'm preaching to save your soul. I'm preaching to get my hand on your mind, on your soul. I have to tell you that you need to be a gatherer, born again child of God. Focus on gathering. These are the characteristics. Look into your life. Do you see it? Are you becoming a disciplined follower or are you still an irregular church goer? Come on. There's more. If Tabu can do it, you can do it. If other people can do it, you can do it. But let's do it all together. Amen? It's not a 100-meter dash. It's a long-distance race. Keep in your lane. Keep on asking the questions. Every year, look back. I'm better. I'm stronger. I'm greater for it. Amen? And focus on the value of repentance and submission when we gather. Amen? Cast your net. You have a barbecue or a braai. Let me don't say barbecue. Man. So I get some South Africans that shh me. Pastor, it's not a barbecue. It's a braai. Why do you do that? Cost your net. Get the meeting to. I mean, there's Pastor Jeffrey today in Scotland. The Bishop of Scotland. The apostle in the north. Do you know how he got saved? No. Just in a casual chat. chat. I went to visit my brother. They were living together. I saw him coming in. I knew he was not saved. And I started to preach to my brother and his friends that were born again. They couldn't understand. Suddenly the atmosphere shift. We were just chatting about stuff. And now I was drilling them. Bah, bah, bah. But I knew he was listening in the room. And then a day later, he was so convicted that when we asked him, do you want to meet Jesus? He repented and gave his life to the Lord. Freely, that which I have, I can give to you. Every meeting, every person, every vessel you meet is an opportunity to gather. Don't let it pass you by. Amen. Ask God for wisdom, ask God for guidance, and as He used me, Pastor Eddie, many others, He will use you 
and together we will gather them one by one for God's kingdom. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a big praise if you receive the word with me. But before we go tonight, maybe you are here today and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You are not 100% sure what will, die, what will happen to you the day you die. We have had this meeting today. We've come together in various places for this moment. This is the most important moment of every meeting we have. It's for you to make right with God. I want you to know that God did not make it difficult. That it's an easy thing to be made right with God. All you need is to believe that God loves you. You need to know that you need Him for eternal life and say yes to the invitation that He's extending to you right now to get born again, to allow God to make you new, to make you part of the household of God. My life changed in a meeting like this. I came to church all my life. I, was, I got brought up in a very religious church, but one meeting like this changed my life forever. When I realized that I was not right with God, I was truthful with myself. I stopped hiding, putting on the mask. I just came to a place where I knew I do not have the assurance of eternal life. And when the pastor made the invitation, I was the first, I, I didn't even put up my hand, I ran to the front. And I said, Jesus, I need you, save me. And before I go, I wanna pray for you. Maybe you're sitting somewhere in another campus, maybe you are just watching online, but you know you need to be included in this prayer. I want every head bowed and every eye closed right now, no one move around, please. Just take a moment to reflect on your own life. Is your life right with Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the door to heaven, the door into eternal life. And if you say, I am not sure, can I please pray for you? Can I pray with you? So that we leave this meeting today with full assurance that your life is right with God. Before we go, if it's you that I'm talking about and you say, that's me, include me. Quietly, unashamedly, wherever you might be, I want you just to slip up your hand quickly, just pop it up, say, here I am, I need this prayer, and I will take notice, and I'm gonna pray for you. If you're sitting in the back, you're sitting in the front over here, quickly just slip up your hand, say, here I am. I need to be included in this prayer. If you're in another campus, slip it up. If you're watching online in your living room, just slip up your hand, say, here I am, pray for me. So Father, we thank you for every person that's saying yes in their hearts, for everyone that's putting up their hands, let your kingdom come, that your will be done in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people say, amen. You receive the word with me, please stand to your feet and give Jesus a big hand. And as we clap, you've put up your hand, you haven't put up your hand, but you know you need to be included in this prayer across all our campuses. If you find yourself in a church, I want you to do something for me. I want you to get out of your seat, make your way down to the altar in every church. Maybe ask the person next to you to walk with you. They will gladly walk with you, but come down so that I can pray with you. If you are sitting in the back of this auditorium, quickly make your way down to the glass section. If you are in the front over here, run down to the altar. We're gonna pray for you in a moment. In every other campus, run down to the altar. Tell your neighbor, walk with me, I wanna go and they will gladly walk with you. But come tonight just as you are. This is your time. This is the season that you come back to God. Come back home. Come to Jesus. Quickly come.
Amen. I want to help people here tonight. Listen to me, please. This is not to single you out. It's not to embarrass you. Amen. God is ripping you from the pit of hell and He's going to pluck you into heaven tonight. So you've been upgraded. Amen. You don't, you're not going to go to the airport and now you go into the third class. Now you're going to go to upper class in this moment. Amen. And maybe you are a born again Christian and you have walked away from God. And tonight you want to come back to Him. I don't care who you are. I don't want you to stay in your seat. I want you to move in faith. That's why we call you forward. So if you know you need to come back, get out of your seat, run to the front. You've got nothing to be ashamed of. I'm going to pray in a moment. God is going to dust you off. He's going to clean you up. And He's going to once again use you for, your, for His glory. Amen. So we're going to clap one more time. I know there's one or two people that still need to come. Don't let fear keep you in your seat. Come on, run to Jesus. Get out of your seat. Run to Jesus. Say, yeah, I am coming. Get out of my way. I'm going to get fixed tonight. Amen. So all you beautiful people standing in front of a church and in this auditorium, I all want you all to look up. I want you to know that God loves you. I want you to know that we love you and we are excited for you. This whole meeting... Is focused on you repenting and you submitting unto Jesus. Amen. And we're going to help you in this journey. But we're going to pray first. If you're standing in front of a church or you still find yourself there in the congregation, you're not in the front, but you need this prayer, I want you to put your hand on your heart. I'm going to lead you in this prayer. I want you to pray it out loud. And I want you to believe every word because this is powerful. Come on. So let's pray. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for today that you spoke to my heart. Please forgive me of all my sins. I know I'm a sinner in need of your grace. And today, in this place, I receive your grace. I believe of all my heart that Jesus is your Son, Savior of the world, and today I'm saved by Him. Thank you, Father, for your grace, for forgiveness, acceptance, and above all, your love for me. I receive it all. And I believe that I am new, that I'm changed. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Plant me in your church and use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you so much for this opportunity that I can pray with you and with you in all the other campuses. I want you to do me one more favor. On your left, on your right, people will be waving at you right now. We're going to ask you to quickly go out of the auditorium. We want to have, we want to give you a gift and a Bible, and then we're going to bring you straight back. So can you please just follow them out of the auditoriums so that we can give you a gift, a Bible, and get you straight back into the auditorium. For everybody else in all the campuses, we love you guys. Keep on gathering for Jesus. Keep on changing your world for Jesus. And we're looking forward to see you next Sunday. Same time, same place. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. We love you. Bye-bye.